Hello everybody and welcome back to the Steam Train. I hope you guys are doing well. This is geared for kids in third to fifth grade. My name is Dorian with New Minds and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. So the first thing we're going to do in our lesson is we're going to learn a little bit about flight. All sorts of things fly. Birds, helicopters, airplanes, even sometimes just a piece of paper we let go and it'll fly away or even a plastic bag. There's actually a lot of science behind why things fly and how we can actually make things fly. We're going to use an example. We're going to draw a little friend here. His name is going to be Fred and he's going to want to learn how to fly. So Fred, he's just going to be a little block. We're going to give him some cool sunglasses so he has some personality. And we're going to make him happy. He wants to learn how to fly. He's going to be a happy guy. Hello, this is Fred. And he's going to learn a little bit about flying. Now we're going to do some physics. And physics is just the study of how things move and how things get around. So Fred is just sitting here and he's actually being affected by something, even if he's not moving. There's one force that is always true in physics and that's gravity. It's always pulling you straight towards the center of the earth. So I'm going to draw a little arrow for gravity. So right now, Fred only has one force pulling on him, and it's pulling him down on the ground. Now, if he's actually not pulled through the floor, because the floor pushes back on him. So every force has a force that acts on him, right? So if he's just sitting on the ground, I'm going to draw a big line for the ground. There's actually a force that's pushing back. So Fred's sitting on the ground, and the ground is actually pushing back on him. If the ground didn't push back or didn't have any force, he would actually fall through the floor. If you fall through something, that's usually because it doesn't have enough force to push back the force that you're pushing. That's why if something is fragile or made of paper, you don't want to lean on it because it doesn't have the same force to push back on you. But this isn't going to be very helpful for getting him off the ground, because this force only happens if you push on it. If you let go of a wall, it doesn't keep pushing you across the room. It just pushes you as long as you push on it. Well, when Fred's in the air, he's going to have a little bit of a different set of forces. Fred, we're going to draw him with even cooler sunglasses this time. I'm going to make him really big, pointy sunglasses. Now Fred has even cooler sunglasses and he's gonna try and fly. Just like before, we wanna show what's acting on him and he's always gonna have one thing and that's gravity. If you're on the ground, in the air, underwater, gravity is always going to pull on you. So the first step, if Fred wants to fly, is he has to go and use something to counteract or be stronger than this force. If we have something that pushes the exact same amount of gravity, just like the ground, he's not going to go anywhere. He's just going to stay in place. So we need something that's going to push him up more than he's getting pulled down. There's a couple ways that things do this. One is a rocket. Rocket's a really good way to fly because it puts a bunch of fuel and chemicals, mixes them together, makes a reaction. And that reaction is going to push against the ground, which is going to push the rocket up. Because of the same rule, it has an equal and opposite reaction. It's actually what, oops, excuse me, it's actually one of Newton's laws. So in order to push up, it has to push down. The same way if I want to jump, I have to push my feet into the ground to go up. A rocket does the same thing. It's going to push fuel and force into the ground so the rocket shoots up. If the rocket isn't very powerful, it can have a bunch of fuel and then just not go anywhere, just do, not go very far. So we want to have something that is constantly pushing him up. It could be something like if you've ever flown a drone, the propellers, a helicopter. If he's a bird, he's going to have wings that he can use to generate a force. But this force that pushes him up has a really easy to remember name, and it's called lift. Lift is a force when you're in the air that pushes you up. And we need more lift than gravity. So this is a really easy start. And we know he can move up and down really well. Hello, Jacob. How are you? 
But there's a little bit more that we can add to this to make it work a little bit better. Because it's all fun and games to be able to go straight up and then straight down like a rocket that has to go into outer space. But the problem is, he wants to go somewhere. He wants to move in a direction. He doesn't just want to fly straight up and then fly straight down and then fly straight up and fly straight down. That wouldn't be a very fun way to fly. So the next thing he's going to need is a force pushing him forward in a forward direction. This can be a speed that he already has. Maybe he has a set of wings that will give him some lift from the air. And he has... It's light enough that it doesn't have a strong gravity. He can run really, really fast off of a really high ledge and then glide down and go forward. So you can carry your own force in. Or you can have something that pushes you. Like airplanes, they have big engines in the back or propellers. They're going to keep pulling you in one way, and this force is called thrust. Thrust is just imagine it's a big push that's pushing you forward. So when you have thrust, which is going to be this way, you'll notice that this force doesn't have anything on the other side. So when you have thrust, something's actually going to push back on you. And when you move, you're actually not moving through nothing. You're moving through air, you're moving through different gases, you're moving through all sorts of different particles, and those are going to push back on you. If you've ever ran super duper fast, which I'm sure you guys have, you guys are some pretty fast runners. If you run super fast, you can feel all the wind on your face, and you feel like you're getting slowed down by the wind, and it's pulling you back. That's because you're actually pushing through a whole bunch of stuff. If you've ever been on the beach, and you try to run through the water, and the deeper you get into the shore, you start to slow down and slow down. That's the same thing that happens in the air. The faster you go, the more of it's getting pushed by you. So there's actually a force pulling you backwards called drag. So this is our Fred in the air. He's getting pulled down by gravity. He's getting pulled up by lift. So there's an even, and we want to have more lift. So I'm going to put a plus sign by it. Because we want more lift. He wants to go this way, so he's going to go ahead and get some thrust going this way. Maybe he has a rocket booster. But every time he thrusts, he's going to have drag. So this isn't going to take away. So I'm going to put a plus sign on this one. I'm going to put minus signs on both of these. So when we want to make something fly really well, we want to have a lot of lift and a lot of thrust, but we don't want to have a lot of gravity and a lot of drag pulling on us. There's a couple ways we can make it better. If something has a lot of mass, it's going to be pulled more strongly by gravity. What do you think is going to fly better? A feather or a brick? Probably the feather, right? Even though it has probably the same amount of lift, let's say they're both the same size. They have a really big feather and a really big brick. They're going to be the same mass, but one's good. Sorry. One's going to be a lighter mass, so it's going to have a lot less force of gravity pulling on it than a brick. The amount of force isn't to be confused with the speed. Everything that isn't affected by lift actually falls at the same speed. Even though I have this tape dispenser and this marker, no matter what, they're going to fall at the same speed. If I have a stuffed animal in this marker, same thing, they're going to fall at the same speed. The only thing that makes you fall at a different speed is having lift. And lift is easier to get if you are much lighter and have less mass. So a really good example of something light that can get lift really easily is a paper airplane. I'm sure we've all seen a paper airplane or made one before. I'm going to make one just for example, and we'll tell you how to make some. We're going to make some other flying machines, and we're going to see what you guys can do with it. So keep Fred in mind, the cool sunglasses Fred, because he can fly. When you want to make any sort of paper airplane, the first thing is to make sure it's even. Because if one side is getting more lift and the other side isn't, it's going to cause it to spin. And then it won't have as much of the other forces. And it'll have more drag because it'll have a bigger area. But we'll get a little bit more to that later. So I'm going to go ahead and fold up a paper airplane that we can use just to look at. It's just going to take me a second. And that's why birds, they actually are covered in feathers. They actually keep the air from getting through. 
so they can have a lot and a lot of lift. If they have something like a, a pickleball or a wiffle ball where there's holes in it and they were to flap their wings, they wouldn't catch very much air and they wouldn't go up at all. They would just flap and just keep falling and keep falling. So you want to make sure you have a solid surface. That's why notebook paper isn't very good for making airplanes that has holes in it. So I'm going to fold up a really, really simple airplane just to be quick and we'll show you some fancy ones later. We'll talk about how this plane has all the forces pull on it. I'm almost finished, just two more folds. And there we go. So I have this airplane. I could look at it from the top, I could look at it from the side, but we're going to look at it from the side first. The thrust is actually given by us. If you drop a paper airplane, it's just going to fall straight down. It doesn't actually move forward until you throw it. So we are pushing the thrust. What's going to push the thrust back is drag. The more of an area the wing can hit it on. I'll show you my hands a little bit later when I'm giving instructions. I'm just trying to make this one really quick. When it's pushing back on it, the drag is going to push everything in the front. If you look at my airplane, there's not a lot to push on. It looks like a really long letter T. There's one really thin piece and two really thin pieces on the side. If this airplane was a big flat square, it would have a lot and a lot of drag because this whole thing would be like a sail and it would get pushed on. But we want our airplane to basically cut through the air like a knife. So we want it to be nice and thin and small. The next two are gravity, which is always pulling. No matter what, if I don't do anything to this plane, it's going to fall. That's because gravity is always pulling me. Even if I'm sitting in a chair, gravity is going to pull me down to the chair, and I'm not going to be able to stand up unless I use a force of my legs to stand up. But we need something to help fight that, and that's why this airplane has big wings. Wings are one of the best ways that you can get lift because it's a big area, the same way that drag would pull you back, lift is going to push you back up if you have a really big surface area. That's why airplanes, they have really long wings that go all the way out. But if you look at it from the front, the wings are very thin. It's so we can have a really big lift, but not a lot of drag. So this is my airplane. These gigantic wings are going to give it a lot of lift. This airplane is going to work a lot better than if I have an airplane with really tiny wings. If I have an airplane with wings that look like this, it's not going to have any lift at all, and it's not going to go very far. So when you make an airplane, you want to make sure it has nice and big wings like this, and it will give you a lot of lift. But there's even more than that. Getting rid of drag is actually a whole science called aerodynamics. That's a big word, but it just means how well something works when air is pushing against it. I'm going to draw some different shapes, and I'm going to talk about how they would do in somewhere aerodynamic. So the first one is actually just a rectangle. When the wind hits a rectangle, it's going to go straight against it. It's not going to have anywhere to go and it's gonna get stuck, and it's gonna push back and push back and push back. So when I have an arrow, they're just gonna stay on the plane, and it's gonna give it a lot of drag. But if I have something pointy, like a triangle, the wind's gonna go, and it's gonna split and go down the sides, because now it has somewhere to go. You can imagine aerodynamics like dropping marbles. What would happen? If you drop them on something flat, they're just gonna land and stay there. You drop them on something pointy, they're going to slide to the side. So if I have something pointy like a triangle, the arrow is going to split either way. It's easier to look at it as the dropping marbles example. So you drop them, and it will split. And the last one's actually a teardrop shape. This is actually one of the most aerodynamic shapes, and that's why raindrops actually end up in this shape. The reason is, when the wind pushes on it, it's going to want to start to curve slowly, and then as it speeds up, it's going to go further and further. It actually connects the wind back into a point. So the wind is actually go around, 
and reconnect. So it's going to go through like a teardrop and connect on the other side. If you've ever seen a wind tunnel, which is a really cool experiment you can see, you've probably seen it on a car commercial. All they do is they have a really big colored air or dust that they push over the car so they can see what shape it makes. If the wind hits somewhere and gets really fuzzy, they know that's not very aerodynamic. But if they see the wind goes really smooth and then makes a straight line at the end, that means they're getting really close to the shape they want. And it's a super cool tool. A really awesome thing is if you have a fan set up, almost like a wind tunnel, and you have an airplane and you hold it, you're going to see how the airplane behaves. It'll wobble and shake in different ways if it's not correct. So next thing I'm going to do is show you how you can make your own paper airplanes, and then we're going to do some experiments with our airplanes to see how far we can make them fly. Because remember, we're trying to make our friend Fudd fly. So I'm going to turn my camera down so we can see the table a little better. There we go. So the first thing we're going to need is just a normal piece of paper. And the first step of every airplane is you just fold the paper in half. You can choose whichever way you want, but it has to be symmetrical. That just means it's the same on both sides. So if we make a line in the middle, we know how to make it even. So I'm going to go ahead and fold my airplane in half. And now I have just a little fold in the middle. They're nice and even, so they line up. And the first thing you want to do is make a triangle. There's a couple ways you can do this, but the way I like to do is just take one corner and fold it over into the middle and then fold it flat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take my corner, make it touch the line, and then nice and carefully fold it nice and tight. So I have my first fold. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side to make sure the corners touch each other. Otherwise, it won't be symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to do your very best. Your best might be a little different than everyone else's, but that's okay. Just do what you can. So here we go. Mine line up nice and pointy, and I have a triangle at the front. But this isn't going to be a very good airplane. I don't have anywhere to hold it yet, and it's just a big sheet. It's not going to go very far. So I want to make it a little bit pointier. I'm going to take this new corner and fold it in the middle, just like we did the first time. So I'm going to take this corner, fold it into the middle, just like that. So my corner is now touching the line, and then I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Because if I did it like this, these two sides aren't the same, so it's not going to fly evenly. So I'm going to put the other side to the corner. And there we go. And now it looks pretty nice. I'm going to fold it in half. It's already folded in half from the very start, so I just need to fold it over. And then make sure to seal it. So I'm going to put my finger slide along the line to make sure the fold stays. There we go. And now we almost have our airplane. This is the part where you get to decide how big you want your wings to be. If you want really small wings, you're just going to fold a little bit of it over. But if you want big wings, like my first plane, go to the very bottom of your triangle and fold it back over. So I'm going to put it back here so you can see. I'm going to fold it back over, just like that. Then you'll see it's kind of folded over on itself. Take the other side, fold it backwards until the two tips touch. So I'm going to fold this side, and make it touch this side. So now she have this weird shape that almost looks like a bird. This would be his face, and this would be his wings. Birds are actually very aerodynamic. The same thing, that's why they have round heads, and they have a teardrop shape in their body, and their tail starts to go off. It's actually so they can fly without using a lot of energy. You notice birds, they have really huge and long wings, so they can get a lot of lift. So this is a really simple airplane. I'll show you a really cool flying machine you can make. It's not quite an airplane, but here's the experiment I want you to do. Make up to three airplanes. I don't think you need to use more than three because that would waste a lot of paper. 
But if you ask your parents and make sure you can use enough paper to do that, then you can go ahead and try out this experiment. But you want to make three different airplanes. You want to make sure they're different because you're a scientist. You want to make sure you have differences in your experiment. If you do the same thing, you're not really testing anything. So this would be my airplane one. And you're going to make up an airplane range. Make sure it's where nobody's going to stand and make sure it's not in the way of everything. You just want to find a nice hallway or maybe your room where you can launch your airplanes. Find a starting line and you're going to throw your first airplane just really gently and see how far it goes. It should lift and it should glide across the sky and then leave it where it lands. Make two more airplanes of different shapes and different sizes and throw those too. And you're going to see a difference of how far they go. Leave them where they are so you can see how far they ended up. So if this one lands and it lands right here, and my first plane goes and it lands over here, I'm going to leave them until I throw all three. And then I'll know how far they went. Something else you could do is you could decorate your planes. Maybe you want to draw Fred inside your plane. So I'm going to draw Fred on the wing of this one. You can do that. Remember, this is your experiment. You're in control of what your planes are like. So I drew just Fred on this wing. Remember, the marker doesn't have to be symmetrical because it doesn't have any weight. It's just on the paper. But now I'm going to show you a really cool flying machine. This one does need a little bit more supplies than just paper. You are going to need a piece of tape and you are going to need some scissors. But go ahead and follow along if you want to learn how to make this super cool flying machine that looks different than one you've probably ever seen before. You're just going to need a regular piece of paper. But if you have an already square piece of paper, like origami paper, it will work really well for this creation. Step one is going to be, just like all planes, you're going to make a triangle. But we're going to make it really, really big. I'm going to lift up my table a little bit so you guys can see. But I'm going to fold my triangle over and make it touch the opposite corner. So it looks like the save icon on a computer, where you fold the page over. And then I should have one really big triangle. So all I did was took this corner and folded it all the way down. This is actually so you know you can make a square with your paper. Because two triangles of the same size is going to make a square. When they're folded over, they're the same size. So we're just going to cut off this little extra piece. That's using a little bit of geometry to help us. So I'm going to fold this piece back so I have a line to cut on. And I'm going to cut this bottom piece off. The cool thing about folding paper is it's been around for a really, really long time. There's a really old art form called origami, if you've never heard of it before. It is a Japanese art form where you fold paper. If you've ever seen someone make a paper crane or even a fortune teller or a paper hat, all of those are called origami. And it's super cool and some people can make some really complicated things with it. But we're actually going to make an awesome flying machine. It looks a little bit like a Quidditch ball from Harry Potter, if you've ever read those books. So step one is you have your two triangles, you cut off the bottom piece nice and smooth. So now you have a big square. You want this folded line to be on the inside, so you want it to show up when you're folding. So it should fold like a taco, it shouldn't fold like the letter A. So put the taco side up and pretend like you're going to fill it up. You're actually going to take this corner and fold it to the middle. I'm going to take my corner, I'm going to fold it so it touches the middle nice and smooth, just like this. So I take it from the middle at the top and fold it down. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge and fold it to the middle again. So I'm going to fold over my triangle and fold it to the middle. Just like this. So I had my triangle, I took the top of it, and I made it touch the middle. The last thing we're going to do is do this one more time with this flat edge and make it touch the middle. There we go. So we should have one side that's a really big triangle, and the other side that's this thick piece of paper. And then the last step is I'm going to fold this whole thing in half. There should already be a line there, so it should be a really easy step. You just fold it over. And this is actually the almost finished part of our plane. This is the tricky step, but this is the really cool part. All you're going to do 
is make sure the folded edge is on the inside and we're gonna make a circle like a hula hoop or a donut. We're gonna round it around. Make sure you curve the whole thing. And we're gonna make it touch itself like a circle. A little bit like this. So you should have a circle. Make it nice and smooth so it's a little dented like mine is. Work out all the creases and make it into a nice smooth circle. So I took my triangle and I just folded it with the folded part inside and made a circle. And you'll notice it has the same teardrop shape where it is a big flat and it kind of trails off. But if you look through the middle, you shouldn't just see a circle. You can see through it, you almost can't see the plane. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the very top. It's gonna to help hold it together. Because it can stay folded, but when you throw it, it does tend to come apart sometimes. So a piece of tape is really gonna help. So you tuck the two pieces together. Just put one little piece of tape on top and fold it over. And you have this awesome circular airplane. This actually flies all by itself. This is the front. So when you throw it, you're going to throw it with the big flat side forward and it will fly across the room. And it's actually pretty cool. But to make it a little bit better, we're going to put some wings on it so it doesn't tip. I have built some of these before if you've been in my Archgate class, but some people haven't seen this yet and it's a pretty fun experiment to do. You're going to take the piece we cut off earlier and actually going to cut it in half. So I'm going to fold it in half long ways like a hot dog bun. Bam. Now I took this and folded it in half. I'm going to cut one strip off and then I'm going to tape it on top to be wings. So I'm going to cut my piece in half. Remember, always be very careful when working with scissors. If you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help from your parents or anyone around you who's helping you with these lessons. And I'm going to put this wing on the top of my circle, so the smallest part. I'm going to put it on top and line it up, and then I'm going to tape it on. Remember, we want it to be symmetrical. So mine's in the middle. If I put it all the way on the side, it's not going to work right. So I'm make sure it's right in the middle, and then I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on the top and fold it over. And I'll have a really cool flying machine. It almost looks like a bee when it's flying around. So now I have my flying machine. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this one out also. If you did the airplane experiment already, then this can be another thing to test and add a fourth piece to your information. But we're gonna look at this with the same Kevin diagram and see how all the different forces are gonna push on it. So the first one is gravity, right? Gravity is always pulling our friend down. So we know gravity is gonna pull Fred down the same way. It's going to pull them down. If I don't do anything, don't add any force, it's just going to fall. But we add thrust by gently throwing it, and it'll start to fly. There's not a lot of drag on it because it's a circle, and you can see straight through it. So the wind is going to keep pushing, but it's not going to stop any of these edges. It's going to fold in and go through the middle of the plane. And the lift is going to come from two things. This big surface on the bottom, this small surface on the top of the ring, and from our wings on top of this. So when I throw it, I'm going to go ahead and throw it off camera that way. It's going to go ahead and fly. So that's a couple things about paper airplanes in flight that can be really awesome. But think about all the things around you that fly and how they use different forces like thrust and lift, what's causing them drag, and how much gravity is affecting them. Because airplanes, helicopters, drones, all of these different things use the same amount of principles. Something awesome about drones and helicopters is that they can actually hover in place. That's because they can control their speed of their rotors, so that way their lift is exactly equal to gravity. If a drone hovers in place, it's actually really, really cool because it's being exactly equal to gravity, so it's almost suspended in the air. That's all I have for today, but I hope you guys enjoy the experiments. Send some awesome pictures of your airplane flying ranges or some awesome airplanes. You can always add your own designs if you're really awesome at building them or you know someone that is. There's plenty of awesome ideas for airplanes on the internet, so make sure to add that to supplement to this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's steam train. 
and keep on learning, and I'll see you guys later.